In this tutorial, we're going to cover the V-Ray physical camera. So let's go ahead and create a plane. Let's do a standard primitive here. And we'll create a teapot. And I'll just quickly add uh, two materials. We'll just do a basic white material. So I just have this V-Ray MTL. Let's just make it white. And I'll drag that onto the teapot and the plane. And when I do lighting, I like to use just white material so I can really see the brightness of the lights. And same with cameras. I usually wait until I'm done with the lighting and the cameras before I add material. But So in this case, we'll just do that. Um, so two white materials. And now let's just add a basic V-Ray light. So under my lights, V-Ray, V-Ray light. And I'll just put this up in the sky here. And let's just give it a little bit of an angle so it casts some shadows. That should work. Okay, so um, to make a camera, if we go to our Create tab, over here to our camera list, you can see there's standard cameras, V-Ray cameras. You can use standard cameras, they'll work just fine. In this case, we'll use the V-Ray camera and we'll use a V-Ray physical camera. I'll show you why I really like this option. Um, to create a camera, you just drag in your window. You can see the target is there and then that's the actual camera. Again, whenever you do uh, cameras or lights, I really recommend minimizing your viewports with that button down here. Let's go to a front view on this one. Um, and so we can go to our different views here, and then I just move my camera on these different views. When I'm working with cameras, I always make one of my viewports the camera view. So to do that, you select where it says perspective, go to camera, and select the camera you just created, and that will show you the view from that camera. The other thing you can do is if you select um, here under your camera you can say show safe frame and that will just make sure you know if you change the scale of this it'll show exactly what you're seeing and what you're going to render out of that camera view. Um, the other thing when you have a camera is I wouldn't toggle within this view. You can but it really will mess things up so I would just uh, only change your your move and rotate your camera in these three views and just leave that one as it is. So if we go over here we can start moving this up and down um, I usually place the target first, so I'll put the target right in the center of the object and sometimes uh, a little higher too. And then I'll select my camera and I'll move that to where I want it to be. So when you select your camera, you can go over to your modifier list, uh, modifier tab, and then it will show all the settings for your camera that you have. And I like this because it's really like shooting a camera in the real world. You change your focal length, you change your F number, you change your shutter speed, and that changes the brightness of the, the scene. You don't actually have to change the light brightness. You can change it in the camera, just like you would if you're taking a photo in the real world. So the first thing I'll change is my focal length. And um, the smaller this number, the wider the angle the lens. So in architectural photography, you're usually shooting with a wide angle lens to capture more of the room. Um, so people shoot with even a 20 millimeter lens, um, sometimes even lower. So I'll usually change this to like a 22 or a 24, but really it's up to you. You can see it, it is a wider angle, so you'll capture more of the scene. So usually once you do that, you have to move a little closer to the object. The next thing you can change is the F number. So let's go ahead, by default, this is probably 12 or 8 or something. Um, but if I just render this now... And it renders whatever active viewport you have. So I'm going to select this one. And I've already set up my V-Ray rendering engine. So you can see there it is. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's a little dark, I would say. So now we can start to increase the brightness of that. So to increase the brightness, all we have to change are the F number or shutter speed. If I increase this 8 to, uh, let's say, 20, just to see what happens, it's going to be darker. That means less light's getting into. Oops, let me go to the right view. That means less light is getting into the lens, so um, it's going to be darker. So you can see it's already a little darker there. So if I go back and I want to increase the brightness of the scene, I can select this and I can actually reduce that. So let's say I go to 3, Enter. That means more light comes in to the lens, so uh, render that. Whoops, I keep hitting the wrong one. you got to make sure you're using your active viewport here. So render again. You can see it's much brighter now. So that's one thing. So usually when I'm rendering a scene, I'll start with the F, I'll start with the focal length just to get the image right and the composition right. And then I will go into the F number 
and then change adjust that. And then if I want to fine tune it, I can use a shutter speed. So a faster shutter speed, so a bigger number, faster shutter speed will be less light, so it'll be very quick, so it'll be darker. And then you can change it the other direction to make it brighter. So it's really up to you. Um, a few other things that are fun to change here. I do all of my depth of field in, in Photoshop and, and After Effects, but you can actually add it here if you want to. It just increases rendering time. Same with vignetting. I'll also do that in Photoshop, but vignetting adds a kind of dark ring around your image to make it look realistic. You can change the white balance. So if you're in daylight, for example, the more blue you have, the warmer the image will be, and the more uh, brown or orange you have, the the colder the image, the more blue it will look. So it's kind of the opposite of what you think. So there I added some uh, blue and it became warm color, so a little browner. Uh, if I go back and select that again and make this, um, let's say I make this more brown or more yellow, it, you'll see this will be much colder now. Oops. Here we go. Cancel. Render. Render. So there's a lot now, almost purple. So I tend to use a more neutral setting for the white balance, um, but it's really up to you. So I'll usually use like a neutral um, and that tends to look really nice. Um, you can also do tilt shift. So if you're doing an architectural photography and want to render a building, all the vertical lines should be parallel to the camera. To do that, you just hit this button, guest vertical shift or tilt, and it will make all the, um, vertical lines parallel or perpendicular to the ground. So that's a really nice effect too. You can also do other things like distort the lens, add bokeh effects and stuff. So it's really up to you and, and change some other things. But those are the big ones. Um, just keep in mind, always move and rotate your camera within these three viewports and then just go ahead and render from here. Now the other thing you can do that's really helpful is when you get better with adding cameras and lights is you can actually active shade and see interactively how adding lights and changing settings to your scene affects things. So um, for example, if I go here and I go to uh, under user defined, go to uh, V-Ray viewport here, um, IPR, you can select that, you can just cancel this. You can see it'll actually update in real time the rendering. And this is really nice because for example, if I select this light, let's say increase the multiplier to 40, you can see it'll actually get brighter in there. If I go in here and create another light, for example, let's say I create another light over here, you can see in real time how it makes the adjustments. So if I select that and, and let's go to our light here, let's change the color so we can really see it. I'll make it a purple. You can start seeing it uh, actually change in real time. So that's a really good way where you don't have to render every time. You can just use this interactive mode to see it adjust. Of course, you need a computer that's capable of doing that, but most of them these days will, will be able to do basic um, interactive lighting.